ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Ohio University's annual commencement exercises. The Simpsons is the longest running TV show in history. Bart is not the only character to benefit from her talents. She lends her voice to several of the show's supporting characters and has done voice work for dozens of animated television shows. She also is an author, playwright, producer, and philanthropist. Nancy, please join me at the podium. <laughs> Nancy Cartwright, on the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Ohio University Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Communication with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Dr. Cartwright. Much. I'm very honored to be here. I do. I stand before you a confused but very successful 10 year old boy. I'm Bart Simpson. Who the hell are you? <laughs> no, really, do you realize that most of you were either just dating or suckling when I first started doing this voice on The Tracy Ullman Show? <laughs> Yeah, which reminds me of Bart's favorite swear word, bosom. <laughs> now, as a disclaimer, if at any point in this speech I ever feel like I've gotten a little serious or maybe I've lost you, I'm going to toss in a little bosom every now and then, okay? Okay. When President McDavis asked me to do this commencement speech, I was, I was very honored. I was honored, in a, in a, but a bit apprehensive, you know, to be here at the same time. Because I never imagined in my wildest dreams that th 34 years after attending Ohio University, I would be back here in front of the graduating class of 2012 and offering a little sage advice. I didn't take any acting classes. I didn't take any voice classes. I just got out there and produced. And with that, I give you lesson number one. Do what you love. <laughs> As for me, fresh out of high school, I was hired at the Dayton-based WING radio station. I'd already gotten a scholarship to go to Ohio University to be on the speech team, so this was, this was a dream come true. And to top it off, I got a lot of support from my family and friends. So that's lesson number two. Surround yourself with people who love you and believe in your dreams. This is a really good tip. Even though it may sound obvious, sometimes it can be a little challenging to identify who really supports your dreams. Jim Bennett, the president and general manager of WING, was really a good friend. He knew that I had dreams of doing voices for commercials and cartoons. And in fact, one day he introduced me to a woman who was in introducing him to music at the WING radio station. She was from Warner Brothers. I shook hands with this representative and she gave me her card and she told me that if I were to write her a letter, she would get it to the right people in the animation department. So I did. I wrote her a letter. She wrote me back and in the letter was this name, Dawes Butler. Now I didn't know, but I was certainly familiar with what he did. He was the voice of Huckleberry Hound, Yogi Bear, Quick Draw McGraw, El Ray Jetson, dozens of others. I, I couldn't believe it, and there was his phone number listed right there. Short story, Dawes became my long distance mentor. He would send me scripts in the mail, and I would record my voice on a tape and mail it back to him. He would listen to me and you know, give me a little critique. I was living in Washington Hall, right here at Ohio University when this was going on. 
He was always positive, always, always encouraging. So lesson number three, hitch your wagon to a winner. Work for somebody as an intern. You know, find out every aspect of what he or she does. Yes, run and get coffee. Pick up their dry cleaning. Do just a little bit more than expected. I have found that it's your intention that will carry you far rather than your ability or your talent. People like to be around others who help others with passion. In every new endeavor I undertake, I approach it with the intention that I want to be a professional at that subject. By that I mean I will really study the subject and I'll work hard at it. I always have the goal in mind that I will be able to deliver a professional product, whether it's a new voice for an animated show, or a new concept for an animated show, or writing a screenplay, or driving a race car, 158.2 miles an hour, or even being a mom. Being a dilettante is not going to cut it. No. Especially when there are so many others out there who really want to work. So don't just dabble in it. In other words, lesson number four, be a professional. Bosom. <laughs> So one very sunny day, okay, almost all days are sunny in California, eat your heart out. <laughs> I got the call from my agent who would change my life forever. They were auditioning for this funky little part on the Tracy Ullman Show. Now Tracy Ullman Show was looking for the voices for some animated 30 second interstitials. We call them bumpers. They're these little mini entertainments that are wrapped around the commercials. So at the audition, sitting on the table were these pictures and I picked up one and there was a description of his character. It said, eight-year-old middle child. That's right, Lisa Simpson. Okay, I look at that and I thought to myself, hmm, not much teeth. But sitting right next to the picture of Lisa was another picture. And there was a description and it said, age 10, oldest child, a devious, school-hating underachiever, but proud of it. That's right. Bart Simpson. Well, I was ushered into this tiny little office and sitting there behind this huge desk was the creator himself, Matt Groening. I was just a little bit scared of him because he was a genius and I didn't yet know what an incredibly nice guy he is. I, I said to him, look, I know I'm, I'm here to read for Lisa, but I'd rather read for the kid. Is that okay? Do you mind? He said, no, that's fine. I said, okay, good. Blah, 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 blah. Oh my God, that's him. That's Bart. You're hired. Bam! That's right. Lesson number five, trust your instincts. You are right. No one prepared me for success. Nobody told me what it would be like to be in the top of my field. And certainly no one had any clue that that show would still be on the air after 23 seasons and I would be here today with you doing this commencement speech. <laughs> That's crazy. I just simply decided what I really loved doing and made these choices along the way that focused me in that direction. But listen, don't get me wrong. It wasn't like I didn't make mistakes. I did. I didn't do it. Nobody can prove it. You can't prove anything. <laughs> but when I started to realize that I was maybe going off track a little bit, I simply changed my mind. It's what we all do so easily, right? So it's not going in the direction that you intend. Then make another decision. Change your mind. And my final tip, you are responsible for the condition you are in. So when it comes to being successful, make sure that you decide exactly what it is that you want to accomplish. But on the off chance, some of you are wondering whether you could take a chance on a career like mine. Let me say this to you. I actually believe that it's the artist that makes the difference in the world. It's the artist who is putting the future there through films, photography, theater, dance, sculpture, music, and animation. It's the artist who gives hope in a troubled world. Not everyone has the luxury to be paid as an artist, but it's very important that you find an outlet for yourself as an artist, because I also believe that it's the responsibility of the artist to use his or her position in society to help create hope 
and inspire those around him. And I encourage all of you, seniors, underclassmen, 10-year-old boys, your brothers and sisters, moms and dads, to follow your passion. Life is an art, so make it beautiful and make it your own. Before I end off, there are just a few other friends of mine who would also like to offer a few bits of sage advice. The thing about huckleberries is, once you've had fresh, you'll never go back to canned. Daddy says dice are wicked. <laughs> I'm going to eat chocolate until I barf. And for all you Rugrats fans out there, it's not really the oatmeal I'm afraid of. It's the guy on the box with the scary hat. <laughs> Is your dad mad at me? Because I've never heard him swear like that before. I'm telling you, Tommy, that Santa's a bad guy. He's always watching you, keeping track of everything you do. And then in the middle of the night, he breaks into your house with a big bag of full of who knows what. And one more thing. Before I leave, eat my shorts. <laughs>